So what I want to do now is output a wireframe of this head that I can use in Photoshop as a reference to align my uh, images against or my uh, texture image against. So the most obvious thing to do is to go to the uh, front view here and output this wireframe uh, so that I can model against it in Photoshop. But what, really what I want to do is optimize this wireframe uh, so to get this wireframe looking as good as I can to make my life as easy as possible within Photoshop so there's a few things that I, I want to do first of all I want to make sure that smooth shading is turned on so in this case it's already turned on you can you can you should be able to see that here you can see that smooth shading is turned on okay and it's also turned on in this view as well okay so if it's not turned on you would get something like this where uh, all the faces are faceted around here. If I turn it on, you'll see that it's smooth shade. So that's basically having three turned on, okay? Second thing that I wanna do is I wanna improve the quality of this wireframe. And what I can do is I can go into, and sorry, my, over, my basic strategy is I'm just gonna render out this workspace. I could render out uh, using Arnold or the other renderers that are available in Maya, but I'm going to render out using this workspace. That seems the most obvious thing to do. So it's just really optimizing this workspace to have a the, the, uh, to give as good a quality as I can get. So I'm going to go into uh, panels, sorry, uh, render viewport 2.0. That's the renderer that's rendering this what we see in this in, uh, in this workspace here. And I can click on there and I can change some of the options. So one of the options is anti-aliasing. I can go in there and say, right, I want to go, I want multi-sample and I want it up to 16, okay? And you can see it's already improved, vastly improved the quality of our render. I could click smooth frame as well. I don't think that does a lot, so I'm not so interested in that. It's the multi-sampling um, anti-aliasing that I want to use, uh, that, that I really want to output. So the next thing that we want to do is uh, actually having this on a black background isn't particularly useful. So I'm going to press Alt B and you'll see that I can cycle through different background options. And one of them is black. Well, which is obviously going to be a much better candidate for um, modeling against or, or aligning a texture against. Now, this grid that we've got in the background is a little bit confusing, so it does kind of confuse the issue, okay? So what we want to do is we want to get rid of this grid. So all I want to do is go Windows and uh, Display uh, Grid, okay? Um, what we could also do is we've got these little, what we call head-up display elements here as well. We've got a view axis and a camera name here that I've got my mouse over. Um, we can get rid of those as well. I don't think you need to, they just might be a bit distracting, okay, but uh, they're not as um, hindering as the grid view was, uh, but I'll get rid of those anyway. Um, so I'll go head up display and I'm going to get rid of the camera names, that's that gone, and I'm going to go head up display and get rid of the view axis so that that's gone. Another issue that we have as well is I can actually see the wireframe of the back of the head, uh, which is kind of quite confusing um, because I'm seeing, yeah, it's going to be quite confusing trying to align it when I can see the wireframe of the back of the head. You can see it through the eyes and you can see it kind of here. So what I want to do is I want to switch on something called back face culling. So I'm going to go into display, uh, sorry, uh, display polygons, back face culling, and you can see that's a much easier wireframe to start trying to model from than what we had previously. Another issue that we have as well is if I click off the head, you'll see that the default wireframe color at the moment is a very dark blue. Um, it doesn't contrast very well with the black. So typically we want something that contrasts better. Um, an easy way to solve this, if I select the object and then just go into my channel box uh, editor, uh, what I could do is I can just create a... Um, uh, a render layer. So I'm just going to create a render layer here. I'm going to go click on this uh, item here. Okay. Uh, so by clicking on this icon, what it's done is it's created a new render layer with this with with the object uh, that we've got selected, i.e., this face, um, 
added to that layer. So if I turn off V, you can see that face is on that layer. But what we can also do is if I double click on that layer, I can actually pick a color now for the wireframe. So I'm going to click magenta because that's really useful. And now when I click off it, you'll see that I've got a magenta wireframe, uh, which is going to be uh, much better to try and actually uh, model against than what we had previously. The other thing that we want to do is just make sure that this camera is absolutely centered on our head. It may well be that um, at some point you um, uh, move the head around, for example. So you want to just kind of go and make sure it's absolutely dead center. Um, again, just uh, we could work around the issue. It just makes the process a bit easier if it is dead center. Okay, so. I'm going to go view, select camera, and so this is our orthogonal camera, and I can just set the uh, x-axis to zero, and I can set the y-axis to zero, okay? In fact, that doesn't really work for us, so I might just ignore that, okay? Let's just reposition it, but we can still set the x-axis to zero, okay? And that means that we've got our head dead center in this frame. Okay, now we've done all this, we're now in a position to output this. Now we could just use something like a snippet tool to kind of copy and uh, to cut the screen and use that as a reference in Photoshop. And that would work nicely. But actually what would be useful is if we could actually just render out this, this head, uh, an image of this head with the exact resolution that we're planning to do our texture in. Okay, and so then we can then just really use that as a basis for our uh, for creating our texture in Photoshop. So what we can do is we can do something called a play blast. So a play blast essentially just renders using the same render engine that's actually outputting this viewport that we're looking through right now. Okay, so it's a very quick way of getting a render. So I'm going to go Windows, uh, play blast. I'm going to click on this square icon because we need to configure some things. I'm just going to reset the settings so that you to to get something that's akin to what you should be starting with. Now. I only want to render out one frame, so I'm going to click start end and specify that we start on frame one and end on frame one. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go. Um, uh, I think we're all okay. We want to render out our view. These settings are fine. I want to change the image format. Sorry, the format to image, and I'm going to select TIFF. That seems to be the best sort of format to go with. Then what I want to do is the display size, I could get it to render out the same size as the window or I could get it to match my render settings, but I'm actually going to go custom and I'm going to put in there the size that I want to do my texture. Now, typically when you're doing texture sizes, you do sizes that are, um, you do values that are like doubles. So by doubles, I mean, uh, you must have seen these values come up a lot in computing. So things like uh, 512. So 512, 100, uh, 1024, 2056, um, uh, uh, sorry, 2050, uh, sorry, 2048, uh, 4096, etc. I'm going to set my resolution to 2048 by 2048. Um, this type of texture resolution, um, a, it's it, 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 it is is Basically, this type of texture resolution makes it easier for the computer to do its calculations and map that texture to the face. Okay, so this is quite useful, if you, especially if you're working with things like games and things like that in real time, where you're kind of trying to optimize things. So that's my texture size, and I want it to be reasonably large. I mean, you could argue that you want to go larger than that, and then maybe scale down. So you can always go larger and scale down later if that's easier. Uh, then what I want to do is this scale here is going to output, at the moment it's going to output this half the size that we specified, which is not what I want. So I'm going to switch that to 1. And then what I'm going to do is say, actually, I don't want to just see the results. I want to actually save those results. So I'm going to go save to file and specify uh, a name. And I, if I click browse, it'll ask me where I want to put it. So it's going to put it in the images folder of my face paint project that I've got here. So that's all good. I'm happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is click play blast. Okay, and you'll see it very quickly is going to generate this play blast for us. I'm going to close that. And if we go into my folder now, so I'm just going to go into the face paint. So this is the face paint project that we're working on. If I go into images, here we have uh, the TIFF image. And I'm just going to go and open that up with Photoshop. So I'm just going to open it with Photoshop. Uh, go cancel. Sorry, I think I've already got it open or an older version open, so I'm just going to try again. 
uh, open with Photoshop okay and you can see here we have we've got a wireframe and if I just zoom in on this I just want to just demonstrate this is a really nice quality wireframe okay and uh, it's going to be ideal for uh, using to align our texture to